Hey there friends, I'm Scott with Stain Foo. One of the most often asked questions we get about Stain Foo is whether or not Stain Foo contains enzymes. And the short answer is no. And then the, the follow-up question is, well, why not? And rather than just uh, telling you, I'm going to actually show you why. So I've set up a little test area over to my side here and I'm going to uh, show you. So let's get right to it. All right, so what I've done is selected two very popular enzyme products from Amazon that are advertised for carpeting, rugs, upholstery, textiles in general. And uh, just to let you know, we used to use enzymes. Our professional cleaning company has been around since 1983. We've used enzymes extensively over the years and there's some inherent issues with them that caused us to go away from them. And I'm gonna show you one of those reasons right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and do what's first called the dry down test. What we're going to do is put enough product in the bottom of these Petri dishes and dry them, usually overnight, sometimes 48 hours, to see what kind of residue they leave behind. A residue actually will possibly and probably attract other soils to the stain that you've just removed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now, before I start, both of these products are very similar in odor. As a matter of fact, I couldn't tell a discerning odor difference between them. There is a little bit of difference on viscosity, which, would, which I'll show you right now. The first one we're gonna select, uh, one more thing. The, the directions do not say anything about shaking them up, okay? We know from experience in our cleaning business that every product, with almost without exception, should be uh, should be shaken up before use. And the reason why is because the heavier solids will go to the bottom while water and lighter liquids go to the top. Enzymes do have some degree of solids in them, as you'll see. So again, always shake these guys up, including stain foo. Every product should be shaken up unless it specifically says not to for some reason. Okay, so we're gonna try this one first. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good shake. Take the cap off. All right, and I'm going to measure out just enough, which is one tablespoon to cover the bottom of this Petri dish. And it might be a little bit more, but that's okay. All right, so that's done. Get this guy and put it out of the way. So what I'm doing now is just gonna wipe this down so that we don't have any residues from product A to product B. All right, the next one, we're gonna go ahead and shake it again. Unscrew the cap. And try to careful, this one's really soapy, look at that. I'm gonna to try to carefully dole out one tablespoon. So we'll put one table, I might have spilled a little, but that's okay. I'd say they're probably even enough for our test. Okay, so now what we'll do is just let it dry. One thing I wanted to show you, if you can see it, it's got a cloudy look to it. And it also has almost like, I can't really tell from this angle. I can see it a little bit. It's almost got like a citrus pulp look to it like there's little chunks of something inside there and if i look at this one it's clearer so i don't know what the chunks are all about there is polymer in one of these and it's probably that one so they might use it as an encapsulant to uh, further pull out soils i'm not sure but that one definitely has a little bit of chunkiness to it whereas this one is is very smooth both of them are opaque cloudy looking which is indicative of most enzymes, if not all, I've never seen a clear enzyme before. And uh, so yeah, we'll just let that go ahead and dry down overnight and uh, take a look at part two of this video. I um, actually, after I pulled the white sheet away, I was able to see that chunkiness that I was uh, des describing earlier, especially on the product on the left here compared to the right. There's some in the one on the right, but not as much. If you look closely, you can see those little white dots in there. All right, so that, just imagine that dries down, it's gonna be left over in your textiles. There's a few on the one on the right here, but not nearly as much. There it is right there. 
you can see it up on the top of the screen, top of the Petri dish there. Um, the consistency is much finer on this one. There is chunks, almost like a pulp in each of them, but this one is definitely larger. Okay, so just things to keep in mind as we go along with our testing. With the other two dry downs in progress of the Enzyme products, I wanted to go ahead and test Stain Foo now. So we'll do the same thing. Remember to always shake no matter what product unless it specifies otherwise, because every product will separate if you don't. Go ahead and shake it good. Unscrew the cap. And we're gonna do the same test that we did for the other two. Just go ahead and put in a tablespoon and try not to spill. Already you can tell the difference in clarity. The stain foo is completely clear. There's no opaqueness as the other two you can see back here. Very opaque and, and cloudy looking. And we'll take it off of the white towel so that you, or the white uh, paper so that you can see that it is definitely clear. Okay, so let it all dry down and we'll come back for the next video. It dawned on me that one thing I didn't mention is the odor of the two uh, enzymes that I had tested. Uh, they're very, very strong. They um, are overpowering and that's just from pouring them into the dishes. You know, you saw me pour them in. I didn't aerosolize it like a spray bottle whatsoever. Although both of those products have spray bottles. And if you contrast that to the, the um, non-enzymatic products like Stain Foo, a huge night and day difference from the odor factor. Now, I, I bring this up for a couple of reasons. First of all, that is a protein. Enzymes are a protein and they could be an allergen to, to some or many people. And secondly, you know, some people become sensitized to odors over time. This, uh, you know, the enzymes odor will definitely cause some people to develop that sensitivity. So I've actually known people who have developed sensitivities to enzymes, so keep that in mind too. But I think most importantly, we're up here as adults, you know, I'm about five foot 11, and our pets and our kids are crawling around on the carpet that we've just applied these stain products to. So yeah, our, our number one goal is get that stain out, but maybe our number one goal should be, well, let's do it safely and then get the stain out. Now we've got kids and pets and stuff climbing around on that carpeting and you know, they're this far away from it. Sometimes pets will stick their nose right into it. I don't know if that's such a good idea, you know, with a protein like, like an enzyme is. So, you know, I'm, I'm just putting the facts out there. You can make your own decisions, whether you think it's something that you want in your family. As a professional cleaner, as a parent and a pet owner myself, that's something that is of, it's just a, a deal breaker to me. We're just not going to apply an enzyme. First of all, it's not needed. Uh, and second of all, you know, there's, there's problems with possible or probable sensitivity over time. Okay, so that's it for this video. I wanted to wrap that up before we get on to the actual results from our testing. Here we are at the lab and I will just show you exactly what happened. I've had about two days for this to dry. And let's start on the right and we'll work our way left. Again, these are two popular products on Amazon. These two on the outside, two popular enzymes. And our product does not contain enzymes and I'm about to show you why. All right, take a look at that guy. It's very opaque. You can barely see through it. And I'm going to go ahead and just touch it and see what happens on my finger. Look at that sludge. Okay, now that's being left behind in your carpeting. Now I say, they say that you can, you should rinse it out, but if you can rinse that out easily, good luck. All right. Let's look at number two, the other popular enzyme that's on Amazon. Less sludgy, however, it still has an oily and if I push down on it, my finger sticks to it. You can see that that's very opaque and oily. It feels, it feels like, like jello or something. And it, and it uh, is oily too. See how it's like I've pushed through my fingers. 
and it's super oily still. Now, I need to wipe my hands real good because I don't want to transfer this to the next product. Well, what I'll do is I'll just switch hands. All right, now see, here's Stain Foo. You can see through it, still got a little bit of, just a tiny bit, but I will show you my finger here. Try it again. It's on the bottom side there. So you can see that it's not an oily feature of Stain Foo at all. Rinses out super easily. I would say that these two are not going to be very easy to rinse out of your carpeting. And what will happen is as you walk on your carpeting, you deposit you know, a little bit of soil. Even if you have bare feet, you're going to transfer a little bit of oils onto your, onto your carpeting. Well, if you have a sticky residue left behind, what will happen is that soil will stick to that and cause it to look yucky over time. Sometimes quickly, I mean, with that amount, that's gonna look terrible right away. And also remember that if you're using this on, on synthetic carpeting, that the carpeting is made of plastic, all right? Now plastic is a, you know, it's a sort of a resin and it attracts certain oils. If it's made of polyester or smart strain, it's definitely gonna attract oils anyway, just because that's the nature of polyester, AKA the new smart strand is also polyester. And what will happen is you have this oily film that is easily attracted to the oily surface of that polyester and it causes it to be extremely difficult to rinse out, very uh, easy to, to pull in um, soils and hold it there. And this is, uh, in, in a cleaning business, this is unacceptable. That's yet another reason why we do not recommend that you use uh, enzymes on your, especially on your carpeting, um, because you can't rinse it out very well. It's just hard to rinse out. It takes a long time to work, and there's a lot of a lot of issues with it. It has a, a, in my opinion, an odor that's really foul. I mean, it's it shouldn't have an overpowering smell, but as an enzyme, it just does. Um, so there you go. Just wanted to show you that there is definitely differences between a product that contains enzymes and one that does not. Now our product actually uses oxidation to break down the cellular structure. With enzymes, what happens is the oil or the, um, the proteins are attacked by the proteins of the enzyme. So it's, it's a natural reaction to get rid of those uh, bad proteins, if you will, that are in the carpeting but at the expense of leaving behind a really sticky, oops, a really sticky like gummy jello style residue. So, and if you, uh, after, you've, after you've cleaned it out, this, this stuff is not gonna be easy to clean out of your carpeting because this is only a tablespoon, by the way, I almost forgot. I only put a tablespoon of product in each of these Petri dishes. All right, and so as you, when, uh, if you follow label directions, they tell you that if it doesn't work on the first try, go ahead and try it again. Well, first of all, you're gonna be using probably more than a tablespoon of product to get to the, the stain. And that's, that's true with stain food too. You're probably gonna use more than a tablespoon unless it's an extremely tiny stain. Because what you want it to do, the product has to go down through the carpet through the backings of the carpet into the pad and possibly even the subfloor for it to even work. So just imagine taking an enzyme and literally the bottles tell you to pour it into your carpeting. One tablespoon, I'd hate to see what a cup or a half cup looks like after it's dry. All right, so that's something you really need to be worried about as a consumer. Again, the Pets are very low to the carpeting and enzymes do have, any product will have, could have some kind of uh, allergic reaction to it. So it will be fair in that category. But just remember that the pet is really low to the carpeting. So whatever you use in the carpeting should be rinsed out, especially if you're using a lot and especially 
if it's an enzyme because it is and can be allergenic. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found that very interesting that we have two very distinct results. And uh, okay, you make your own decisions on that. All right, as we wrap up the dry down test, I think it's important to underscore that we're not denigrating the companies that sell these enzymes at all. As a matter of fact, enzymes are probably safe for most people. However, there's probably a percentage that are not, that are affected by it because it is considered an allergen as a protein. And also because there's pets and, and babies that crawl around the floor, that's as a professional cleaning company, that's of utmost importance to us. So I just want you as a consumer to understand and consider all the facts before just dumping stuff in your carpet. You see, anything you put into your carpet needs to come back out eventually. And if, as you saw with the dry down test, if you're leaving a, a sludgy residue, again, it, it's an allergen and it also will attract more soil. That soil has a load on it, it, it builds up and it's harder to remove once that happens. So just be informed and I wanted you to uh, see for yourselves that there is a, definitely a major difference between an enzyme and stain foo. All right, so thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.